Okay, here we go. Uh, we'll wait for computer and screen and you guys and we'll see where we got. Okay, here comes the screen and we got the typical ad, nutrient survival. Hey, we actually have a prepping ad for a change. What do you know? All right, uh, move that up. Close out that because I don't care about Coachella. Motormer, healthy disrespect, Robert Bates. Storm chasing gal, H blank, <laughs> whatever. Uh, there we go. Rosie, Farm Ranch, Fastball, Joseph Cook. Okay, at least some of you guys can see me, country humans. Uh, so we only have 300 people in here tonight. So could be a little bit slow. Well, now it's 400 people. Okay, so everybody's clicking in just at 8 o'clock. But uh, yeah, could be the weather that's pretty much hitting hmm, the southeastern quarter of the country. I mean, if you look at, what is it, everywhere from Texas up to Pennsylvania and down to Florida, uh, that whole triangle, we're all under wet weather right now. It's been spitting and raining and just overall nasty out here today. Uh, only got in the 50s, so wasn't a good day to be outside, but still managed to get out in the garage and work on my plants. I redid all my peppers, which are now about six weeks late because I killed them when I was sick. And then it took two days to rehydrate the soil and get everything like that done. Amazing, you know, 10 gallons of water, how that soil, those little cells sucked it all up. You know, you wonder how much you have to water. Yeah, quite a bit. And let's say got my broccoli out to harden today because that goes in this weekend. Uh, my tomatoes have sprouted. That was good. Uh, yeah, I think that was it for what was outside. So that a couple hours out working on plants today. So that was nice. Uh, last couple of days, Sunday and Monday, I got out and tried to do a little fishing. Didn't catch anything yet, but the lake is still low. So, uh, but Hey, chance to get out and just be out in the sun for a little bit and who knows what you catch, but, you know, food is food wherever it comes from. Uh, I know Mrs. P wants to smoke some fish, dehydrate some fish. Yeah, I know Americans don't get into the dehydrated fish thing, but actually it's pretty good. Uh, kind of like making fish jerky, which if you've ever had that, it's pretty much what she's doing, except the fish is still on the bone. Uh, that was pretty much the excitement around here today. Uh, if you guys noticed gold and silver still going absolutely insane, uh, which is good. I mean, you know, silver was up and up one and a half percent today. Uh, was it, I know it was over 27. I don't remember if it got over 28. Did we get over 28 today? Yeah, 2838 was our close on silver. That's nuts. Okay. We haven't seen that in over three years. Uh, gold, of course, is hitting new record highs pretty much every day. Tomorrow's CPI numbers come out. We'll see what happens. But, you know, we could, we'll very soon see $3,000 gold, which is going to freak everybody out because, I mean, hell, we just hit 2000 last month. But, I mean, you figure, I mean, we're up, what? 10% in a month, 20% for the year on gold and silver. I'll take it. So doing good there. Uh, exciting for me, at least. Uh, putting solar panels up. Finally got all those purchased and all the stuff I need to do that. So when the rain stops, the solar panels are going in. Hopefully that'll be Friday. Uh, so we'll get that done. So I will be excited to be have hard panels and have portable panels. So no matter what happens, I can charge somehow, some way, whatever, and have some electricity. So, you know, it's one of those things. It's I've been working on the whole solar thing for three years now, you know, bits and pieces, buy it here, buy it here, buy it here. When we can afford this, when we can afford that, we just keep getting it, you know, and finally you're getting to the end of building it. But like anything, you know, that's worth having, it takes time and effort to get to. So that's the plan. Once we get everything dried out and we'll get up on the roof. So fortunately, it's not going to be on the 
apex of my roof. It's going to be on the front porch, which is only an angle such as so, not the the peak. Because other, if I wanted to put it up on the peak, I'd have to cut down a whole ton of trees in my yard, and I don't want to do that. So we're going to put it where we get a good six or seven hours sun a day, and I'll be fine with that. Because I think I told you guys to run the house, uh, not including our water heater. I can run the house for four days. So if I get six hours of sun every four days, I can fill my batteries. So I'm good. Uh, and at least that way we've got critical circuits and everything like that backed up and I'm good to go. Uh, news wise around the world, it's been kind of quiet. Uh, there's not been a whole lot going on for the last few days, uh, which is fine. You know, I mean, interesting because we keep hearing stories and rumors of stories and everything, but you can tell that even the media is starting to scramble for, because there's not a whole lot important going on out there. Uh, nothing different because the news uh, web pages are seem to be full with a lot more opinion pieces than they are with hard facts. So that was it. But so we will do a little bit more Q and A because there ain't a whole lot for me to talk about. So let's talk about what you guys want to talk about and go from there. So as per normal, uh, if you got questions for me, please put them in all caps, just like every other YouTube channel, it just makes it easier for me to find them in the chat room. The only thing, of course, I require is that everybody in here be on your best behavior. Keep it PG-13, okay? You know, I don't mind disagreements, but if you're going to be rude to somebody else or obnoxious, then just leave. If you don't want to leave under your own accord, we'll do it for you. No problem. So, all right, let me get to the top here and get after all the five by five. So we'll see what's on your mind here. Uh, Farm Ranch Homestead, the rainy, drizzly weather was great for mowing my field. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're out there with a tractor, I can see how that worked well. Lawn mower, not too much because it plug everything up. I'm going to have to get out and mow my lawn. I mean, I'm going to have a busy, busy weekend once it dries up. That's for sure because the grass was already getting high yesterday. Well, grass, whatever you want to call it, we grow around here is green weeds that you mow, it's your lawn. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's already getting high. And so three or four days of rain, which is all week is what we're supposed to get here. It's probably gonna be pretty thick by the time I get out there this weekend, which is fine because then Mrs. P and I will get out and rake it all up and throw it all in the compost pile. I mean, we mowed the lawn, I guess now about three weeks ago or something like that and still had the fall leaves on the yard. And we filled up all of our compost bins to the point where as we were watering them down, I mean, we were probably hose on them for about an hour trying to get them wet. And Mrs. P is on there standing on them, trying to stomp them down to pack them in as best we could so we can get something going in there and you know get them to start compacting and breaking down a little bit and so now if I can get some grass clippings in there I will have the makings for a great compost pile so that's the game plan for us but yes I agree with you on rain and drizzle is going to be good for the lawns uh h blank will the democrats request Reparations from the sun since it wore blackface yesterday. <laughs> God. Okay, moving on. All right. Uh, Prep Rebel, I'm not supposed to follow your bad steps regarding peppers. Yeah, considering I planted 15 trays with, worth of them, so that's what, 360 pepper plants. Uh, yeah, that's that time consuming to get them all done. Uh, you know, you can imagine when I got to transplant them into cups. Uh, but so I figure at this point, I'm going to be harvesting peppers in September or October this year. Because, uh, like I said, I mean, I should have, if I would have been fine, my peppers would have been going when I planted them originally, which was mid February. And I've got some that made it, you know, that are already three or four inches high. Uh, you know, now I'm going to have to wait six weeks for those, which means with a little bit of luck, I'm putting my peppers in the ground the first of June and they're still only going to be three or four inches high. So yeah, I'm a little behind the power curve on that one. <clears throat> P 
Pennsylvania country girl. We hit 77 in central PA. It was awesome. Yeah. I, we had a week or so about that. It was so nice to put shorts on again, but getting into this jeans and socks and I mean, sweatshirt yesterday. It's like, no, I'm done with that. Uh, Barbara Ernstberger, what would be the best gas mask and cover up for the radiation that you would recommend? Oh God, now I got to remember what the name of the company is. Uh, Mira Safety, is, M-I-R-A, is where you can find pretty much the all the equipment, all the NBC equipment you want, nuclear, biological, chemical. Uh, just make sure when you get yourself a mask, you buy some extra filters, okay? Because filters don't last forever. Uh, and then when you get yourself a suit, make sure it's got a hood over it. And then also make sure you find yourself gloves and boots, okay? Uh, fortunately, the days of the good old army mop suit, the charcoal, you know, God, those of you guys are military, you remember mop suits and how hot those things were, okay? Uh, I mean, charcoal lined suits, everything like that. I mean, thing probably weighed 10 pounds when you put it on. And I mean, it was like sitting in a sauna for in there, you know, in the wintertime, it'd be fine because keep you warm. But, you know, when I was in El Paso putting this thing on, it was a hundred degrees outside and then you're in a charcoal lined suit. No, but you can certainly find yourself some of the lightweight suits. Uh, that's what we've got, but Again, remember the whole point of those is to get to have it to get you to safety. And you know, we've talked about I've done videos on it before about how to cordon off a room in your house, preferably one where you have access to a bathroom, uh, where you can have everything you need to seal the windows, which that's pretty simple. You're just going to take some of that shrink wrap stuff that you put over a hair dryer over the window. Uh, that's the best way to do it. Uh, you know, worst case scenario, use duct tape, you know, 100 mile an hour tape, uh, and then seal off underneath the door around the whole door with duct tape or anything like that. So you're in a sealed off room, the vents, make sure those are sealed off. Because what you're trying to keep out is the fallout, uh, the radiation, you're just going to have to wait that out. But what you're trying to seal everything off from is make sure no fallout comes in. So that's what you're looking for. But yeah, have yourself a suit because after any sort of event, when you're going to see if things are okay, that's when you're going to put that suit on and you're going to go out with your Geiger counter or whatever and say, okay, the radiation level is X. We can come out or the radiation level is Y. Everybody get back in and reseal us up, you know, hide again. Uh, Shirley, pinball, is this cold, nasty weather, dogwood, blackberry, or plain darn cold? I know what you're talking about. It's like Tennessee's got like 15 different winters that they call. I, I don't know what they are. I'm not originally from here. I know dogwood winter, blackberry winter, you know, yada, yada, yada. I don't know what they are. It's just cold and wet to me, you know. That's it. So I'm not worried about naming the two-day-long cold spell. Uh, Chris the Cat, I was gifted a seed mat. Very excited. Cool. There you go. Those are nice. Uh, I'm guessing you're talking like a, a, a heating mat for seeds, uh, which that's nice. Peppers, tomatoes, eggplants, stuff like that will greatly appreciate those to help to germinate because they won't germinate under about 70 degrees. Uh, let's see. Marie, S-C-H-N, you never know how you want me to pronounce that. Was Mrs. P a prepper in Russia or did you teach her most of what the two of you do? Well, okay. And you got to think about it different because living in the Soviet Union, certainly, which she did till she was 14 uh, when the Soviet Union fell, or then living in Russia, you kind of had to somewhat have the mentality now maybe not to the, the scale we all go to because she lived in moscow so it wasn't like there was somewhere you know an apartment building it's not like there was somewhere she'd go plant a garden okay 
but having that skill set to make things useful that you know you using something that for something that maybe it was not intended to but to solve a problem uh to having food put away yeah that's pretty much the way of life over there okay so of course then we got here and her getting with me the concept wasn't that different it was just on a bigger scale uh so i guess that's pretty much the only way but i mean then again there's things she's taught me how to do there's things i've taught her how to do and there's things we've learned together on this journey so uh you know simply put as that i mean we're always always learning so uh north of the 52nd tested my lion cooler went down to minus four impress impressive compared to the other portable coolers i've used thanks for getting the discount you're more than welcome like i said i mean i got this one a couple of years ago i loved it they had me uh i was given the EcoFlow one to review and that one was a piece of junk uh and i mean that's why i just never even saw it i mean i sent it back i'm like this thing is Twice as expensive for half the performance. They're, no, you know, it's not a good idea. So, and hopefully they took that feedback and said, okay, we got to fix this thing. I don't know. I haven't seen since. Uh, Ann Palmer, the weather is rough here in Northeast Louisiana right now. It looks like I lost a half, half old, half an old pear tree, I'm guessing. Hope it will sprout back. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, losing the tree i'm assuming it's either to lightning or to wind uh but yeah that those are the things that suck when you lose fruit trees because it's not like you go oh gee i lost a tomato plant or two and maybe you still have time to grow another one you go okay i lost a fruit tree well maybe about seven or eight years from now i'll gonna have fruit in that tree again or in that space yeah but, but we all have to deal with stuff like that i mean i've got one tree that I'm going to have to pull out here in the next couple of weeks, because when we ordered it, we ordered an apricot tree and they sent us something that was marked apricot tree. And then we didn't get any fruit off of it for a couple of years. You know, wait till it got big enough. Right. It's like, what is going on? No fruit. And I'm like, why doesn't this look right? And so I took a picture of it. It was a Chinese plum tree, a flowering plum. Like I don't need a flowering tree. I mean, I need a fruit tree. So we ordered another tree to replace it. Another one of my sweetheart cherry trees. Uh, the reason I got to order it is because good luck finding it, you know, to get a sweet cherry that grows down here in Tennessee. Good luck. Okay. But that one will. And uh, so I had to order that, but that's supposed to be here around the end of the month. And then I'll pull this tree out, which is probably going to mean hooking the truck up to, and a chain up to the tree and yanking it out of the ground, but it's about the only way to do it. Uh, Vicki Savage, when the price of precious metal goes up, it means the value of our currency is falling. Exactly. You are exactly right. Uh, and it also means the value of the pound, the yen, the euro, uh, the Australian dollar, whatever is getting weaker and weaker and weaker as well. The reason that you have countries, you know, the equivalent of our Federal Reserve buying gold is because they all know their economies are failing too. And so the countries, the people are trying to hedge themselves so they still have something of value once the currency, as the currency keeps getting more and more worthless. And so while it's all great that you go, gee, I've got ten thousand dollars worth of silver right now and you go i only spent five thousand dollars to get it yeah and the point of owning it is because back then when you bought it for five thousand dollars what you could buy back then for five thousand dollars now you can buy for ten thousand dollars so you can still get the same hundred widgets as opposed to having it in cash where instead of getting 100 widgets at fifty dollars now you're getting 50 widgets at a hundred dollars that's the deal. Uh, neighbor Bob, hey, Pinball, per CNBC today, Costco is selling an average of $200 million worth of gold per month. Does this concern you? No, it makes me happy. The more people that buy it, 
okay, means the more people that they have their heads screwed on straight. And when we have more and more and more people holding something of value, that means when the collapse finally shows up, the day that we all wake up and the dollar goes from uh, a dollar index of 103 or wherever we are now, and it's all of a sudden a dollar index is at 50, you know, that the dollar just got devalued by 50%. We won't have as much panic in the street because there will be a lot of people going, thank God I've got something that's really worth something. We won't have as many people going, crap, I went broke overnight. So, you know, that's, you know, ask Mrs. P, ask anybody who's been through a currency devaluation. I mean, Mrs. P was through, went through it uh, when Russia devalued the ruble. I mean, they cut the value by 50% overnight. You woke up, you know, and your paycheck or your, or, I'm sorry, your groceries wound up twice as expensive. Your paycheck didn't change. That was the problem. Uh, Dragonfly Dwyer, what website do I look at to check gold and silver prices? I look at AppMex, APMEX, because uh, they keep the spot price bid and ask. You know, they well, let's say that not the spot price. They keep the bid and ask on the open market. Okay, so you know what the going rate is to buy it on the market. The going rate is that you'd sell on the market because you know there's always that spread. Uh, Jerry Spinoza, how to get water from a 400 foot well with no electricity. Simple, get electricity. Uh, you guys know that was my big deal for getting the, the solar setup I had so I could run my well because my well is 330 feet deep. And this way, if we have an EMP or something of the sort, or the power goes out. I mean, power just went out on us the other night. I think I told you that story about it. And okay, if power goes out, I don't have any well water. So I can't take shower. I can't wash the dishes. I can't get a drink of water, cook, anything like that. I'm sure you could flush the toilet, but you know, pouring water that you got out of it. Uh, so that was the whole point of me getting the setup I've got so I could run my well pump. Uh, you know, the other thing that you talked about too is all right, have a backup water source. That's the reason I dug the pond. So I've got a backup water source if something got really bad. But let's say we get into a situation where, as we, somebody asked before about uh, NBC suit, <clears throat> let's say we do have a nuclear attack or something like that. Somehow I've got radiation poisoning around, okay? My well water won't be poisoned because it's 330 feet underground. And if I can pump it up into the house, I still have fresh water, whereby my pond water, you wouldn't want to touch. So yeah, where it, it gets expensive to do some of this stuff, if you do it over time, which every day we get less and less of, okay, eventually you get there. And like I said, it took it's gonna take me about three years Roughly, I don't remember exactly when I bought the first piece, uh, but it was in 2021. And now I will have everything ready. Okay, great. If it takes you three years to do it, now it's going to be 2027. You hope to God the world lasts that long. But I mean, there there is no way around it. I mean, you know, you're not going to get a hand pump at 400 feet. Okay. You, if you can even find somebody that'll get a hand pump that can go that deep, I'd be surprised. Okay. Uh, D. Mobak, do I hear any news at all from preppers in Russia? No, we don't. Basically, Mrs. P's got a couple of friends back there that she talks to every couple of months, you know, be a chat or something like that. That's about it. Nothing much. Ah, uh, okay. What's the problem, you two? Okay, you went all the way to the bottom. Uh, find where we are. Okay, here we go. Pennsylvania country girl, again, same question. What's a deep 
a good deep well hand pump. My well is at 180 feet. I have no idea. Can't tell you. Uh, I Like I said, I wasn't going to play a game trying to hand pump water like that. You'll if you can find if you can find one more power to you okay but i have no idea i never even was going to because never was even going to look for one uh kevin little i planted strawberries last year first time in a container forgot about them they stayed outside all winter new growth so yeah strawberries are perennials so uh it's like mine i mean my strawberry strawberry patch i planted five plants two years ago and my strawberry patch is now packed with strawberries, uh, with strawberry plants. And because, I mean, all the runners and everything, and Mrs. P was out looking at them today when she went out to feed fish and said there's flowers on the strawberry plants, which usually we get our berries because we got uh, June bearing. And for us last year, at least, they came in around the third week of May. So uh, we'll let them go. We'll get ourselves a couple of gallons of strawberries and Either she'll make jam out of them or freeze them or do something, and that'll be that. Uh, Vicki Savage, I watched the totality from my peaceful porch. The highway was a parking lot. Oh, yeah, I got a kick out of a video I saw today. I think it was from Arkansas. Uh, the line of cars that was 40 or 50 deep waiting at some charging station to charge their EVs so they could go home. You know, where does it take half an hour to an hour, something like that to charge a car? And you're 40 or 50 cars deep. And let's say they got eight charging stations. Yeah, you got five or six hours to wait until you can get your turn to charge. Well, everybody else goes, I'll go to the gas. Five minutes later, my gas, bye. <laughs> Idiots. Uh, Neuron Web, why does Costco and Sam's Club only sell 5% five for five percent vinegar now? Probably a better question to ask Costco and Sam's Club because I don't work there. Uh, do I have a Squirrel 219, do I have a good gardening or foraging book I can recommend? Uh, let me see what's right here. Yeah. We've got one of them that I like over here. This is a good one. The Bug Out Gardening Bag by book by Ron Forster or Ron Foster. Uh, that is probably the one that I'd say is most geared toward preppers. So take a look for that one if you want to find something along those lines. Uh, Patty G, when should I take the straw off my strawberries? I'm guessing you live up north uh, because down here, I wouldn't bother to put them on. So I'm assuming you live up north because the ground freezes. Uh, I'd say as soon as you've had your last snow, uh, that would be time to get them off. You know, when the ground, when, when snow will no longer stick, when the ground's thawed out, you know, when, when the dirt is above freezing, then you should be okay. Uh, George's garden, how do hard panels hold up to hail? Uh, it depends on the panel you buy. They're all, they all have a hail rating for it. I think the ones I got will handle up to golf ball size hail. I think it is. Uh, so, you know, and again, you see, what was it down in Texas or whatever they, whatever the other day they had that entire solar field that was destroyed by hail. Yeah, it's gonna happen. It's like anything else. I mean, sure, the solar panels have a 25 year warranty on them. It doesn't cover hail, okay? It covers them working. You know, it's, look at your car. If your car is out in a baseball size hail situation, your windshield's gonna be broken. You're gonna have dents all over your car. It, that's just part of life. You know, you can't go through and say, well, I'm not going to do it because if this ever happens, you know, they'll be worthless. Well, at that point, you know, tell all the people that had their house wiped out from a tornado. Tell all the people that ever lived through an earthquake or a hurricane or whatever it is. You shouldn't have bought your house. You know, you, you can't. 
get get the ones that are the best rated you can, but understand Mother Nature's got a mind of her own. She didn't care about a warranty. Uh, Jersey Prepper. Hello, Mr. Pinball. Is it too early to plant my peas, beans, and lettuce up here in Jersey? I think I'm zone five or zone six. Uh, your peas and your lettuce, you are way late. Your beans, you're too early. Uh, beans don't go in the ground for you, probably. Let me see if I look for me. So you're probably one, two. You're probably beans, beans, beans. Where are my beans? There you go. Yeah, beans, your beans will probably go in the ground mid-May. Mine go in the beginning of May. Uh, your peas and your lettuce, you... Your peas should have been in in the ground six weeks ago. Uh, your lettuce, if you're planting it in the ground, probably should have been in the ground two to three weeks ago. Uh, so both of those are cold weather crops. Uh, you know, your peas, you should be harvesting your peas by late May. You know, and you're talking it's already close to mid-April. So yeah, you are way late on peas. Uh, honestly, if you're thinking about peas, I if I was where you are, I'd probably skip peas this year because it's so late. So, uh, but that's up to you. You can try it. You're just not going to get the six foot high plant. You're not going to have the best harvest. Uh, Indiana mom, what is the best way to find and vet a handyman for renovation projects? Word of mouth. Uh, ask your neighbors, ask somebody at church, ask the cashier at the grocery store or whatever, you know, Hey, I've got such and such to be done. Do you, do you know anybody who does stuff like that? And I mean, around here, this is the way most of the guys get their business. I mean, the electrician that I use that hooked up my uh, smart panel was recommended me by a neighbor who was up the hill. And after I talked to, after I had this guy done, I recommended him to two other people. So out of the guy doing one job, and I don't know where Harvey got him from, the guys had four customers at this point, uh, a handyman that I use that was just out here yesterday doing some measurements for me on the second floor. Uh, I got his name from Brett because uh, Brett had found him. So, you know, word of mouth is going to be the best way to find who's good, who charges fair prices, you know, who does a good job, you know, who's punctual, who's responsible. Yeah, find, find somebody who's already used the guy and see what they say rather than go on Facebook marketplace or whatever, you know, some guy who can't keep a real job, you know, he gets fired everywhere he is because he shows up to work drunk, he says, well, I'll just put a sticker on my truck and I'll become a handyman, you know, okay, the guy can't keep a job, it's because he never shows up to work on time or whatever, never gets his projects done, it's not who you want. Uh... Prep Rebel, have I ever heard of a product called Rot It? To help my compost pile. No, that I no, I've never heard of it, but I will warn people about some of these. And I can't say that this project product is legit or not. Okay, so I'm not talking specifically about it, but I know there's videos on YouTube. You know, supercharge your compost pile by adding a can of Coke and. Uh, you know, a can of beer and a gallon of ammonia to it or whatever, it doesn't speed it up any, okay? All you're doing is you're adding some sugars, you're adding some nitrogen, you know, that's what it is. It, the compost, I can't say for rot it, compost is four things, greens, browns, water, and air. That's it, okay? Uh, you know, you turn it, you keep it moist, you can get compost quickly. Or if you do the lazy compost, like I do, is I just make a huge pile in the spring of all my browns and greens and let Mother Nature take care of it. Come fall when I need the compost, I've got my inner core of compost and the rest of it goes back into the next pile. It's easy. Uh, 
off-grid living, have I ever tried tying squash plants up on poles to prevent squash bugs and vine, vine borers? No, uh, but I mean, if you think of the the three sisters, for example, you know, running your squash, your beans up a, a corn stalk, uh, that's kind of the same concept. So you think about what that would be. Uh, but I mean, again, now it's going to depend on the type of squash you grow too. Uh, but sure, I mean, running squash up a trellis is... I'll say one thing, there's, there's two good things about running squash up a trellis. It, the, hard, the bad one is you need a lot of trellis because squash will just keep going. Okay? Uh, the good things are, is you don't have to worry about the critters getting to them, you know, voles or moles digging in from underneath and all of a sudden you go, hey, I got this great acorn squash where you pick it up and the bottom's eating out of it, okay, because they came up from it. And it'll save your back too. Because you're not, because you know how squash grow, they grow basically right on the ground, so you don't have to pick it up. It's like, oh, here it is, right here, snip, and down you go. So, yeah. Uh, as for preventing bugs or vine borers, uh, I don't know if that would even work, but I do know it, growing vert. If you can grow something vertical, it's always good because that gives you more garden space to use. Uh, Scott McHugh, pinball, did my quarterly prep check, changed the gas cans to the car and the truck, and got new gas for six months. Still looking for the pallet of silver for prepping. There you go. Yeah, uh, good time here. We just changed the clocks. That should be when you're swapping out your gas. So take all the gas that you had for the snowblower or whatever it was over the winter, put that in the car, burn that up, fill up your gas cans for your lawnmower, your chainsaw, whatever you're going to use over the summer, and rotate your gas. Just go through uh prep rebel at least you're not wearing socks and sandals and sometimes i do when i go to bowling i do because i need socks for bowling and to pain in the ass trying to take off regular shoes so i just put sandals on over my socks go in there and you know then when i leave it's just chomp, and my shoes are on yeah but no not often do i wear socks with sandals but there are special occasions uh country humans network i I wear shorts all winter in Minnesota, considering we had eight days over eighteen days over fifty nine in December through February. Well, yeah, you guys that live up in Minnesota, you're a different breed. <laughs> okay, you guys, Montana, North Dakota, upstate Iowa or Iowa, Idaho, Mainers. Yeah, you guys. I grew up with Midwest winters. I'm done with winter. You guys are up there going. You know, cool. Let's go swimming in January. Well, we only need to dig through three feet of ice there, uh, Sven, and we're off and running. So, <laughs> not me. Fishing is supposed to be enjoyable, not freezing to death. So, uh, Rick's Corner. Hey, Pinball, what kind of lawnmower do I have? I have a 54 inch uh, zero turn, you know. Uh, bad boy mower. So, made in the USA, made in Arkansas. You know, not one of the, gee, assembled in USA with all Chinese products. You know, like, oh, I mean, what are some of these? I mean, even a Cub Cadet or something like that is basically a Chinese made lawnmower at this point. Uh, Susan Lathrop just wanted to say hi to you, Mrs. P and the pups. Thanks for all you do. You're most welcome and thank you for being here. Uh, Michelle Allport, do I use sunscreen? Again, depends on what I'm doing. Uh, if I'm going to be sitting out in the sun fishing all day, yeah, I will. If I'm going to be working in the yard, usually no. Uh, but, you know, it, it depends on what I'm doing. But I don't use it that much. I don't tan that well. Uh, so I'm not looking about, you know, working on my tan. My, my vanity days are long gone. Uh, Jacqueline Presnell, what do I think the odds are of we having an EMP here? I can't even begin to guess. Okay. Uh, I, that, that's like asking me what Xi Jinping's going to have for dinner tonight. I have no idea what they're thinking. So, uh, Jenny DP picked up pork loin for $1.50 a pound. What would be a good seasoning? Not carnitas. I already have jars and lots of carnitas. Uh, funny you say that because that's what we had for dinner tonight. Uh, yeah. 
see, and again, this is, there's so many different ways to do it. Uh, but to me, the, the best way to eat pork loin is with sauerkraut. So I just chunk it up, can it just as the pork loin with some salt, be ready to go. And when you're ready to cook, dump your sauerkraut in a Dutch oven or whatever, put your, pan, put your pork chop cubes in there, eat it up and you're good. I mean, that's, that's my answer. So, but I know that, that there's a million different ways to cook it. So, but even when Mrs. P and I were having it tonight, cause we made it just in a crock pot. And of course I can't have the vegetables and stuff. I was like, Ugh, sauerkraut and potatoes needs to be here. So, uh, H blank again, watching Ryan Hall on the side tonight in South, South Texas, hail tornado straight line winds from 2 AM to 6 AM tonight, one and a half inches expect or one to two and plus inches expected. I'm assuming rain, <laughs> not snow, uh, generator plugged in, ready to go. Good. You've got the right idea. You know, the storm is coming. You've got yourself pre-positioned for it. So when, if the storm happens at two o'clock in the morning and the power goes out, you just have to go to the kitchen and go, boom, plugged into the generator. It's already sitting here ready and go back to bed. That's it. Uh, Vinny Brady, how long do you keep your heat mats on for hourly basis for best germination? Heat mats need to stay on 24 hours. Uh, your lights somewhere between 14 and 16. And once the uh, peppers primarily sprout, then you need to take them off the heat mat. Okay. Because they're not the heat, the extra heat's not going to do anything good after they've germinated, after they've sprouted, other than dry out your soil faster, which inevitably will dry out your roots. So, yeah, when, once the tray has all sprouted, Turn off the heat map. Uh, Broken Dolly, Pinball and Mrs. P, what herbs do y'all grow and what do you plant with veggies to keep them separate? Uh, we plant our herbs in individual pots, uh, you know, like 12 inch pots, you know, just decorative pots. And we put those out in the back flower garden here. Uh, but Mrs. P's got basil, she's got oregano, she's got dill. What's the other one? Is it? She's got one more and I forget what it is uh, that we use, that we grow, but we just grow each one in individual pots. It's kind of something hardscape in one of her flower gardens, but it's something that's close to the back door. So if she needs some dill, just snip, snip, snip. There you go. And we got fresh dill or fresh whatever. Uh, New Thought 23, am I still eating only animal products? Yes, and drinking water. Okay, so uh, again, like I just said a minute ago, it's like I couldn't have the sauerkraut, I couldn't have the potatoes, so it's just the pork loin. So yeah, it was pork loin and butter for dinner to me, though I did have one green onion with it just for a little bit of flavor. Uh, but because, you know, bland pork is very boring. But I mean, we get in there, I mean, it's we made, let's see, what do we have this week? Mrs. P made meatballs out of ground beef and Italian sausage the other day. We had, that was what, yesterday. Uh, we had a chuck roast on Sunday. It was just bad because she got to eat the carrots with it. And no potatoes for either one of us. And I had a couple of slices of onion. Uh, had chicken thighs for dinner a few days ago. I mean, it's the one thing on the carnivore diet I will say is an absolute necessity is an air fryer. <laughs> it's an absolute necessity, but yep, I'm still eating it. And I mean, both of us are down around 20 pounds. So uh, I'm in another one of these lulls again. So it'll be a couple of days of sardines for me again. Uh Raccoon eyes. Is there anything Mrs. P misses about living in Russia? Oh, sure. Uh, you know, she she certainly misses speaking to people in Russian. Uh, there are there are foods she certainly misses. Uh, you know, I mean, and I mean, I can go back. There's things I miss about living in Chicago. Not that I'd ever go back. Okay, but 
you know, anywhere that you've ever lived in your life, you know, or, you know, been for any sort of length of period, you know, there are things that you liked about that, you know, there are things that you dislike too. Uh, but sure, you know, I mean, she misses friends and, you know, again, think of, you guys have all seen pictures of Moscow and everything like that. You know, the beauty of some of the stuff, you miss seeing that. But, you know, then there's things she doesn't miss, like six six months worth of winter. Uh, you know, the constant struggle, not knowing if your money's going to be worth anything the next day, you know, so. Uh, all those things that we're starting to worry about now. Uh, Catwoman 63, advice for transplanting 20-year-old asparagus bed. It's either move and save some or leave and lose all. I've never lived anywhere that long to have to do that. Uh, God, who was it? Somebody, look on YouTube. Uh, I want to, it might have been M.I. Gardner. I, I think it was. He did a video, got to be a couple of years ago, talking about transplanting asparagus. Uh, watch his video. Because at least that's a place to start because I don't, I've never done it, so I can't tell you how to do it. Uh, Leona Riley, 266. I grew a lot last year in grow bags for the first time. Apartment dweller. What do I do this season to prepare the soil in them before planting again? Okay, so I did a video on uh, rejuvenating your soil. Oh, God. Look in the gardening playlist for it, and you'll, you'll find it in there. Uh, but basically what you want to do is dump all that soil out into a wheelbarrow or if, you know, if you're, I'm guessing living in an apartment, you probably don't have a wheelbarrow, get yourself a plastic tarp or an old shower curtain or something like that. Dump all the dirt onto there and then mix in some fertilizer, mix in some blood meal, mix in some bone meal uh, into that soil and just kind of rejuvenate it all, uh, if you will. That will be, because you've got to put the nutrients back into that particular soil that the plants that you grew in it last year took out of it. So, you know, you want to get that uh, nutrition put back in there. It's, you know, one of those things where, like I said, you know, using the coffee grounds, eggshells, chicken bones, that sort of stuff, that would work. Uh, but if you don't save something like that, then even putting some 10, 10, 10 in there, mixing that in, uh, that would do it. But that's what you want to do. Dump it all out, mix all that up, get some fertilizer put into it, and then refill the pots. Don't just try to plant into the same soil because you're going to have to go through there, pull out roots and everything like that that are in that soil. Uh a cushion at tape pinball. Do you know whatever happened to all the gold we had at Fort Knox? If I knew, somebody certainly with more knowledge than me would know. Uh, yeah, it's interesting how nobody knows how much is there, if any. Uh, Prep Rebel, which fruit trees need to be in pairs for prep, prop, proper pollination? And does it work with okra? No, okra, you need to, all you need to do for okra is plant it in a pot of gasoline and throw a match at it. And that'll be the best possible use you could have for okra. Uh, in regards for the fruit trees, it depends on the, it, it, it's, not, it's not even down to the point of it depends on the fruit you're going to grow. It depends on the type of the, the different sub fruit. You know, uh, you could get, self-pollinating pear trees, you can get ones that need to be cross-pollinated. Uh, apple trees, most of, the, most of them need to be cross-pollinated. Uh, but I mean, I've got self-pollinating peach, pear. Yeah, my, my peach and my pear tree are self-pollinating. My plums need to be cross-pollinated. My cherry is self-pollinating. My apples need to be cross-pollinated. My figs are self-pollinating. So, yeah, it it depends on what type of each one. So you got to look on the labels to see what it is. 
Uh, Garden Maddock, Mrs. P has a beautiful accent. How many different languages could she speak? Two, English and Russian. <laughs> uh, let's see, which is more than most people. Uh, Broken Dolly, do I have a metal detector? And if so, what kind? No, it's something that I've kind of wanted to have, but it's never been a priority. So no, I don't have it, you know. And again, I'm not the type of guy who's going to go out and try to find, you know, old shotgun shells or, you know, something like that. I'd be the one who's going, all right, where the hell can I go and find, you know, old silver and gold coins in the ground? That's That would be me, so. Uh, healthy disrespect. I have no idea how deep my well is. Any thoughts on how to find out? It went around 1960. Uh, look on top of the well. And I'm just speaking for what's here. Okay. Uh, you know, when you get the well cap out in your yard, on the top of mine, it's got a, you know, who the well company was. It'll have a label on there or something. Uh, maybe you can see who the company is. Cross your fingers, maybe the company's still in business. Call them up and say, hey, do you have records on this particular property? Maybe they do. Uh, I don't know if the uh, county recorder would have that. They might. That would be somewhere else that you could possibly look. Uh, Fat Daddy's Outdoor Cooking. Thank God we're all still alive after the eclipse. eclipse. Go with God, people. Yeah, you know, I mean, everybody was so worried if we were going to make it to today, but yeah, we're here. Surprise. You know, but notice the media today. They're like, we didn't say anything. You know, crickets. You know, it's like, oh, that's over. Okay. We got him to do all the, you know, click on all our clickbait. Now let's just move on. Uh, up there we shot to the bottom. Doom, 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 doom. Okay. The trough farmer. I finally grew some nice onions. How should I cure them? All the best. Thanks. Okay. So the first thing you need to do with onions when you get them, I hope you did not cut the stalks off. Okay. Look, take the onions as you have them, put them in a well ventilated shady spot, okay, uh, and leave them sit there for two, three, four weeks. You'll know that the onions have cured when you can finally go in and cut those stalks off. You cut it about a, uh, about an inch above the bulb, and if you see no green in the center, it's dry. If you see any green in the center, let them dry for another week and try on the next onion, okay? Uh, that's how most people will do it. Now, if you're one of those people that wants to braid your onions, obviously that doesn't work. So at that point, you're going to just let them dry for a couple of weeks and then just braid the onions anyway. And then they're going to continue to cure like that. But yeah, you need dry, cool, as much air as you can get on them. So, you know, if you could put them over some hardware cloth or something, you know, build a two by four box and staple on some hardware cloth. That's about the best you can do because then you get oxygen circulating all around it. Uh, but yeah, usually you need to sit three weeks to a month to cure. Uh, D. Mobeck, best book everybody should have. Trust me, Cold Times by Anita Bailey. Please get the book. You'll never regret it. Okay? Never heard of it. I have no idea what it's about. <laughs> Uh, Mikhail 539, have I seen the new USDA guidelines for dairy farms to protect against HPAI, which is H5N1, and I'm going to look here real quick. Hang on. Uh, do, 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 do. Yes, I did get your email today. I was looking through it. I thought it, was, it sounded like the same thing that you emailed to me. I haven't gone into detail on it, but I did see the overall stuff on it. So yes. Uh, Vanessa Todd, our New Zealand government from 1st of April 24 has road user charges for EVs. Good. Uh, you know, I mean, this, and again, here's the, the stuff I've talked about that, you know, we all pay for the roads in fuel tax. I mean, go look at 
the sticker when you go buy gasoline and you know they'll tell you how much the federal fuel tax is the highway use tax the state tax whatever it is right there and that's how your price is calculated and the ev users all went ha 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 we don't have to pay for it anymore except here's a good one for you evs are more what's the word i'm looking for uh destructive to the roads than a gas-powered vehicle okay because they're heavier and so all those ev owners then all of a sudden got this big shock what do you mean i've got to pay five times as much to register my car well you do more damage to the roads and you don't pay any of the highway use taxes so yeah that's how they're going to collect it from you and you know so then you go through that so good soak the ev drivers i don't care that i mean Buying those things to me is about the stupidest possible thing you can do. But hey, there's a bunch of people that think somehow that the amount of uh, pollution that they emit from a car, you know, even though we had complete change in emissions in 1970, okay, they think they're going to change the earth. They're delusional. Uh, so good for New Zealand, the communist government of New Zealand. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Steve Sams, can you cover solar panels with clear Lexan for protection? I'm not a solar panel ex expert, but I've never heard of anybody do that. So, uh, <coughs> I'd assume if you could, they would have already done it. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can tell it's getting late. Uh, Vicky Savage, there you go. The best advertisement is word of mouth and the worst criticism. Oh, yeah, that's absolutely true. You do a good job, people will tell 10 people. You do a bad job, people will tell 100 people. Uh, State 1085, now that we can self publish, are you publishing a Southeasterner's garden prepper cookbook? No, <laughs> no, trust me, there's probably 50,000 people down in the Southeast who know more about gardening in the Southeast than I do. I'm not going to try to fake it at all, thinking like I know more than they do. Uh, I'm still learning some of the stuff about growing in the Southeast because it's the first time I've ever lived down here. I'm getting there. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I've done in other places, I've been able to use here. But I mean, I still am fiddling around with the calendar of when things go in the ground here. So... No, I won't be writing any books anytime soon. Uh, Country Humans Network, what's the matter with states trying to ban the, the sale of Bradford Pear? I, have, I haven't heard anything about that, so I, that I don't know. Uh, Prep Rebel, thank you for your input. I was wondering about the product. Okay, I'm assuming that was on your compost thing, Rot It, I think it was. Yeah, I've never heard of it, so sorry. Uh, Pete Midwest, have I heard about the Dearborn Rally Death, De Dearborn, Michigan Death to America Rally? Your thought? Yes. Uh, and my question is, where's the FBI? Okay. Because if they're going to arrest people screaming, yelling about how their kids are taught in school at school board meetings and saying they're domestic terrorists, when you have people in the United States screaming death to America, that is the definition of a domestic terrorist. Where's the FBI? Oh, that's right. Joe wants the Muslim vote. Uh, BW3506, heard anything about military action ramping up? Tons of various jets flying over Oklahoma all day long. Unusual, mostly no more than occasional here. Uh, no, I have not heard anything about any sort of even... Uh, bigger trainings than normal. So no, I have no idea what that is because uh, it's too early for reservists to be doing their two-week summer tour. And obviously today's Tuesday, so you don't just have reservists or National Guard on a drill weekend. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, the only the only air, uh, the only Army base I remember being in Oklahoma was Fort Sill. And I can't speak for the Air Force or anything like that. So, yeah, no, I but I haven't heard anything. You know, I haven't seen anything. It's not like I've got contacts at the Pentagon. OK, 
Okay, but I haven't seen anything on military.com or anything about any upcoming trainings. Uh, 859, so I got time for one more. Okay, we just talked about that. Uh, Vicky Savage, winter fishing huts can be man caves and elaborate. Yeah, I know, I've seen them, but I'm not going to go out there and spend five hours hooking up all this crazy stuff so I can sit there and... I'll fish in the summer, okay? I don't have to worry about ice. If I want to fish in the winter here, I can go freeze my cojones off and go out and do it. But uh, it can be done around here too. I mean, you remember uh, Brett and my army buddies and stuff going out and fishing for striper in January. So, or maybe it was still December. I think it was last week of December. So yeah, they were after it. So, all right, guys, that is a Tuesday night. Have a good evening. We will see you in the morning. And hopefully I will be before 8 o'clock this time. <laughs> Night, y'all. Pinball out.